All right, so we're going to register in our new application. I'm going to go Simon Vrashliotis, Simon at simonswiss.com. And let's go uh, terrible password, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. This is not my real password, by the way. I don't know my real password. You should use a password manager. <laughs> one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And I'm going to register and check this out. I am logged in as Simon. And just to prove you that I'm really logged in, I'm going to go log out and I'm going to go log in. Oh, and also let's look at table plus. And if I refresh the page, look at this. Here's my user with the hashed password here. This is cool. So let's try Simon at simonswiss.com. But I'll go one three one three one three one three, and it's not going to log me in because it doesn't match records. So I'll go one two one two one two one two, and now when I log in, I am back in. So this is a real. It's not just a UI, yeah. It's an actual authentication service in place, fully functional, pretty secure, state of the art, well thought. That comes for free as the starter kit of Laravel Breeze. And little do you know yet, but this UI is built with React and Inertia, which means you can use all the React ecosystem, like Radix UI, Headless UI, whatever you want, and you will see progressively how cool everything is. I'm pretty happy with this starting point. Let's keep going with the tutorial. All right, let's start creating chirps on the next step. Like I mentioned, there's things like models, migrations, controllers. Laravel is going to give us this PHP create or PHP make commands that make it super fast and nice. And this is where people fall in love with Laravel because you realize kind of like Ruby on Rails uh, has the same sort of like type commands that scaffold boilerplate for you. And you just have to actually put the functionality that is specific to your app instead of the whole CRUD operations and RESTful actions, create, delete, update, all that stuff. It all comes boilerplated for you in a package. And then you can start going through there. All right, so models, you can think of each database table uh, as a model, a person, an animal, event, a talk, some sort of entity would be your models. And then migrations we've seen is how you create these tables with specific fields. Uh, and then controllers are responsible for processing requests. So when you visit a page, a controller is like the traffic controller say, hey, you should do this. Here's the data that you need. Uh, go and do your thing with that view. And here, look at this. We're going to go PHP artisan make model or a chirp model, but we're going to go dash M to create the migration as well, and RC to create a resource controller. So resource controller is a controller that already comes wired up with the seven, I think, actions, restful actions that you have in the convention of view, show a single one, index for the list of all, uh, create, update, destroy, all that stuff. Check this out. I'm going to copy that command. And let's go PHP artisan make model chirp chirp. All right, so look at this. It created models chirp.php, which is our model file. It created a new database migration. You can see it here. A new table that has fields for ID and timestamps. Pretty simple. And then the controller, which is where all our actions are going to happen. So if I close my database here and I go in the app models, you can see our chirp model. It's pretty bare bones for now, but we'll get to that. And then in HTTP, we have our controllers. You could see we already had the profile controller, but now we created this chirp controller. And this is what I meant. We have the index function to display the list of all things. Then the create action, a store action, which is the actual event of storing what you've created, a show function, which is going to show a specific single entry, edit to edit it, update, which is the action of storing the edit that you've done, uh, destroy, which is deleting the entry. So there's these seven functions prepared for you. And all you have to do is like put the logic in there to do what you want your app to do. Pretty cool, huh? So I've just covered this. So let's go into the next step, routing. Another concept in Laravel or all application frameworks really is how to handle routes. We have this route resource convenience and resource uh, automatically registers the seven uh, actions that I've just showed you instead of listing them one by one, like get index, uh, get show, post update, patch update, uh, all these things. Uh, the route resource is going to know what are the seven default actions and already kind of wired it up in one line. So to start, we're going to have the index that lists all the chirps and the store, which is where when you create one, it persists the data into the database. 
And the really cool thing here is we're also going to make sure only authenticated people can access and see these chirps in our routes web.php. Let me open the web routes. You can see we have a couple of examples. We have this uh, get to the home route, which was this welcome screen that you could see at the home route. So if I go like this, this is the welcome page. It's returning a inertia render of the welcome page. And the way it works is in your resources here, you there's a little bit of learning curve with the folders, but you, really quickly you get home. Uh, in the JavaScript, we have our pages here. And so inertia renders the welcome, which is this welcome React component. And you can see this is a React component that happens to use Tailwind CSS. Yes, yes, yes. And so when you visit the root route, this gets rendered because this is defined here. Okay, I'm gonna try to not over explain everything, otherwise this video is going to be hours and hours. There's another one for the dashboard. You can see here that it checks that the user is authenticated and verified. And if that's the case, you can access this route. So if I go to the dashboard here, I am authenticated so I can access, but if I open an incognito window, and I try to access the dashboard manually, you can see I'm redirected to the login page. There's reason why we get sent back here, but just for now, know that this is basically say guard this route in the condition that this middleware uh, passed successfully. There's also route groups here. So you can see we have this group where we check that the person is authenticated. And so every route inside there is automatically going to check uh, for authentication instead of having to do it manually for each route in that group. And these are for the profile, uh, edit, update, destroy. And it reminds me that I haven't showed you the other thing that Laravel Breeze come with. You can see, you can change your email and name here. You can update your password and you can delete your account. So you have all of this UI and you can imagine how you can use that template to make forms for other things with already the components. These are like uh, primitives components that are in a components folder and you can, it's kind of like a mini design system already baked in on top of the authentication service. Where were we? Yes, we were going to create a new route for our chirps. So here's what we're going to do in this web route. We're going to create a new route, which is a resource. Remember, this is like seven actions in one. It's gonna be chirps, so slash chirps. And then we're going to use the chirp controller that we have created, uh, which is, what we use up here. Just think of it as an import in JavaScript. If you want to use next link somewhere, you import link from next link at the top. At the top here, let's use the chirp controller. And then let's go before the dashboard here, route dash dash resource. And we want chirps. And then if you use GitHub Copilot, it works extremely well with the Laravel as well as you can see. So we want the chirp controller class. So by default, this is going to create routes for the seven uh, actions of the resource. Think of them of every action that was defined in our chirp controller, which is index, create, store, edit, update, and destroy. But right now the tutorial said we just want index and store, I think. Yeah, so you can see that if we say only, we could have done these two routes manually, but we're going to end up having more than these two. So we go the other way, we enable all of them, but we only want to have the index and store. And you can see on the next line that we do the middleware to check for authentication and verified email. And actually see here, we can see PHP Artisan route list is going to give us a list of all the routes that we have available. So if I run this, let's expand that a little bit. You can see we have a lot of pages created by, uh, this is all, Laravel Breeze for the creation of user accounts and reset password. But here we have chirps index, which is the get and the post, which is the chirps that store. These are the two functions in our controller where we're going to write the logic. And if I was to skip that step where we go only and I rerun the routes list, now we should have seven routes. There you go. Check this out. Post, get for create, show, update, destroy. This is what the resource is doing for us. But let's go back to only having index and store. We're going to start with our index uh, list. We're going to indicate that our function should return a response. 
and then just return a response that says hello world. It's obviously not the final destination, but this is a first step. So in the chirp controller, let's use the response so we can specify here, we want it to be a response. So we're going to return a response that says hello world. Uh, PHP does not make semicolons optional, so you need to add it here to have valid syntax. So if I try to visit slash chirps, we get a hello world response, uh, which means the route is wired up. It is not impressive just yet, but hang on. And this is now where inertia comes into play. 